call the special meeting of the Common Council to order. Um, City Clerk Richards, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Groth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Or present. <laughs> Alderman E. Berg, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Davis. Uh, Honorable Mayor, I, if you look, you can see I'm, I'm wired tonight here. Uh, I have a, a hearing device here so I can hear the common council and the comments from the, from the audience here. Uh, the last several meetings I've had a very hard time hearing because I'm, I'm deaf in one ear and I have diminished hearing in, in, the, in the others. So uh, I made my problem known to uh, the city clerk, Sue Richards, and the mayor. and. And we got this here, and I tell you, this works great. So hopefully, and thanks a lot, I appreciate uh, providing this here. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome, Alderman Davis. At this time, I'd ask uh, Mr. Don Van Akron to come up so we can, uh, Sue can swear you in. And would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? Okay. I, Donald Van Akron. I, Donald Van Akron. Swear that I will support the Constitution. I support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the office of alder person. Uh, discharge the office of alderman. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. We will move on to matters laid over. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, due to the number of people that we have here in the and the two items that we have on the agenda that people may wish to speak to, um, I'd like to make the following motion that after each resolution is opened and introduced to the council and put on the floor, I move to open the floor to the members of the public who wish to address the council tonight on those two issues that come before this council, and that each person be allowed a maximum of three minutes with no extension of time. That way, anybody in the audience and everybody in the office, uh, audience, if they want to, will be able to speak. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Not all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Matters laid over, 347, resolution number 13506 by Alderman Groth terminating TIF district number one and authorizing the city finance director, treasurer to distribute excess increment to overlying taxing districts. Alderman Groth. Yeah, and I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to the motion, uh, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. If not, uh, Sue, would you call, call roll? I'm sorry, um, somebody? At this time, if there's anybody that would like to speak on this particular issue, um, is there anyone? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you could just kind of explain this and go over this a little bit so that we know what this is all concerning, please. Sure, but I'm going to ask um, Mr. Gephardt to come okay. up and, and address this because uh, he's a finance director and he has all the answers to okay. all the questions, I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Alderman Grau. It's just in summary, uh, Tax Incremental District Number 1 was created in 1984 in the downtown area. 
and it funded the acquisition and uh, demolition of several buildings in the downtown and then the construction of the parking lots that are uh, located north and south of what is now Yonkers and uh, now uh, the U.S. Bank building. And uh, the city also acquired and demolished buildings along the uh, riverfront area and uh, that allow for new development and for some public areas for landscaping and uh, walkway areas. Uh, during the past 21 years, the district has created over $36.5 million in new property value within that district. And uh, since the uh, debt has been paid and the transfers to District 6 will be completed in 2005, uh, District 1 at this time then should be terminated. Uh, this would allow the property values that have been created in, in the district to be included in the non-TIF assessed values as of January 1st, 2005. So this will assist with the next tax bills that will come out as far as value. It'll, it'll assist the rate the, you know, with the restraints that we will be anticipating from the state. It will probably not generate more revenue for us for operations, but it will assist in offsetting the, any rate increases, and that's true for the city, the county, and the schools within the Sheboygan city limits. Are there any questions from all the persons? Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. If there's no other discussion, City Clerk Richards, would you please call the roll? D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 327 resolution number 10506 <clears throat> by Alderman Montemayor repealing resolution number 590405 regarding the siting and building of the new of the city's new police station <clears throat> at Sheridan Park. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to move this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. A motion and a second. Thank you, and I'd like to read this oh, resolution. Under discussion. Thank you. A resolution repealing resolution number 590405 regarding the siting and building of the city's new police station at Sheridan Park. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan on August 2, 2004, passed a resolution authorizing the use of Sheridan Park for a police station. And whereas the good citizens and electors of the City of Sheboygan secured over 2,900 valid signatures on a petition for direct legislation requesting a referendum election on the question of preserving <coughs> Sheridan Park forever and whereas it was determined that the petition was not an appropriate subject for direct legislation and was placed on file by the Common Council, and whereas the Common Council now finds it in, finds it in the best interests of the city to look again at alternate sites for a police station and not build it in Sheridan Park. <coughs> now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council hereby repeals resolution number 590405, which authorized the use of Sheridan Park for a police station. Be it further resolved that the appropriate city officials direct the Zimmerman Design Group to cease further architectural design services on the police station building, which relate specifically to the Sheridan Park site. Be it further resolved that the City Council hereby reopens the site selection process for a new police station and requests the Building Use Committee to investigate and make further recommendation to the Council regarding other options for the site of the police station. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to, the last, be it further resolved, it's on the second half of the document. I would like to eliminate that and in its place offer this amendment. To amend the last be it further resolved to read that the Common Council hereby requests the Committee of the Whole to establish and implement the process 
for selection of a site for construction of a new police station and to investigate and make further recommendations to the council for the council's use in making a final site selection. There's a motion, there's a motion and a second to amend under discussion. I, I just wanted to explain this. I think it's important that, that the whole com committee, the whole be involved. So all 16 of us get involved in the process and understand what are we looking at. You know, for example, my personal opinion would be we've already paid an architect. We've already retained one. Let's let him look at 23rd. Other people want to look at another site. I'm fine with that. If there's two more sites, I don't think it, you know, in my mind it would pay to look at a whole bunch more. But obviously, you know, we can look at the police department and building use could possibly come up with one key one or two key ones that we should consider. But I think all 16 of us have to be involved in the process because then at the end, even if one, I don't get my favorite choice, I'll look back and say, well, it was a fair process and I'm going to support the will of the council. Um, people who have been keeping track of this, I won the few aldermen who alienated everybody because I didn't support building it on the park site, but after the council voted to do so, I didn't vote for rescinding it either because I didn't feel there was enough direction as to where we go from here. Tonight, if this amendment passes, I'm going to support the rescinding or repealing because it gives us a direct process. I don't think it adds a lot of time to the, to the process. I think we've got a clear way to go, send it to 16 people, let them figure out the process. And not only the site, but I think as we look at the sites, we have to also consider where do we, do we want to build the fire range in-house or not? How much room do we need for <coughs> a municipal court? Those items affect how much, as we've seen in the architecture wars here, those two items affect where we, how much room we need and where we can build a legitimate police station. I think everybody here has stated they're for the police station. I think this is a process to get it done. And I think if we do look at the 23rd Street site, if that's what they decide next week, I'm fine with that. But I, I think it's a, as we go through this process, it's a, it's a sound out to the friends of Sheboygan who said, hey, we want 23rd Street because we've got shared service. It's a, it's a warning to the people in the county, the leadership that we're making, we're looking at something else. Now you better come back and give us a commitment or else there's nothing special about the 23rd Street site in my mind if the county doesn't come and sit next to us. So that's why I'd ask everybody to support this amendment. And all it really does is send everything to the council and the committee of the whole so we can all get together and agree on a process before we make a choice. Thank you. Alderman D. Berg on the amendment, sir. All right, I have an amendment of my own, but we'll have to vote on his first. We'll have to vote on this amendment, yes. Alderman Segali on the amendment. I was just going to uh, yield it over to uh, Mr. Alderman Berg. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? <clears throat> Oliver Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. I think what the amendment does also is to um, encourage the new alder people to get on board and have a good chance to look at this thoroughly. And I think that's an advantage for the whole council. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. I just wanted to mention for those of you watching on TV, um, all the aldermen should have got this either by email last week or on their desk with their packet. So it wasn't like I just threw it at you tonight. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, I think one of the reasons that we're here tonight, and I want to thank uh, Alderman Stefan and Alderman Montemayor for the amendment and the proposal that they have on the table, but the ultimate goal is to move it out of Sheridan Park forever. And um, I just wanted to thank them for uh, putting this on the table because that's the objective as to why we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? If not, would we'll you call roll, please? This is on the amendment we're voting on. Eber, aye. Serta, aye. Davis, aye. Graf, aye. Kittleson, aye. Manny, aye. Meyer, aye. Montemayor, aye. Radke, aye. Sigali, aye. Stefan, aye. Susha, aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Bauman, aye. and Deeber, 16 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Deeber. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> He already took out the last, uh, be it further resolved. So I would like to move that we amend that be it further resolved if the Common Council votes to repeal resolution 590405, the proposed 23rd Street site be removed from consideration as location for a new city of Sheboygan Police Station. Be it further resolved, the Common Council hereby directs the Chief of Police, Deputy Chiefs, and Zimmerman Design Group to investigate building the new police station on the Penn Avenue site, bounded by Pennsylvania Avenue, North 13th Street, 
Center Avenue, and Commerce Street. Be it further resolved, if the parties mentioned in the previous, be it further resolved, agree that the Penn Avenue site is a desirable location, the Common Council move forward to place the new police station at that site and resolve the neighborhood issues surrounding Sheridan Park. There's a motion to amend and a second is read. Any further discussion? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess uh, the way I'm thinking is that if people want to have my vote changed on Sheridan Park, I would need to do it under three conditions. That North 23rd Street site get taken off the table immediately, and preferably I'd like to see that in writing so it doesn't come back to haunt us. Number two, I would like to go along with Alderman Berg that the Penn Avenue site be investigated thoroughly and immediately. And number three, I'd like to speak to the Friends of Sheridan Park. Um, I'd like for you to put your money in your hands where your mouths have been and get out there. And Alderman Sigali, that's out of order. Please restrain I'm your comments. I'm not saying it's sassy, Mr. Mayor. I'm just saying that Please restrain you do that. Please limit your comments to addressing the council. Okay, that, they, uh, that we all work together so that we can put monies into that park and make it a park that what it should be and not at the, at the uh, people's expense. We, if all of us work together, we can help the Sheridan Park area. We can put parks, um, benches in there, uh, new play equipment in there. We can do it all. But instead of talking about it, we need to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the uh, amendment by D. Berg? If I may, I would like to, to just address the council on that particular issue. I think what Alderman Berg is proposing is, is, is where, very well within line. I think those are good suggestions, although they would probably be better uh, proposed during the committee of the whole meeting, which the 16 aldermen, aside from the mayor, will be able to put together that process. And if that's indeed what, what you would like to do, and, there's, and you establish a process for that, then I don't see where there would be a problem. My suggestion, if the council still wants to vote on it, that's fine. Alderman DeBerg. That's exactly where it's going. With his further be it resolved, it is going to, it is going to the uh, committee of the whole for discussion. And I would ask that you please address the chair accordingly. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I need to get something clear on Mr. Burr, on Alderman Berg's amendment. He wants, is, am I correct that he wants to have part of this resolution amended to take 23rd Street off of consideration forever? I believe that's what it says. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Stefan. I guess that was part of my question, and I think you maybe the city attorney, I don't know if we've got the right language here. If Alderman Berg's intent is to have the committee the whole next week take up this idea, I would think a motion to refer this amendment would be in order. Because otherwise, I think the way he presented it, if we pass it tonight, 23rd Street's off the table, and we're only looking at Penn Avenue, and I don't know that we want to make that decision at this time, I would certainly support referring it to the committee of the whole right. and also do so. Let's turn them clean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I don't know that it's a legal comment, but I guess what I heard, and I haven't seen it in writing, Alderman Berg, uh, kind of goes along with Alderman, what uh, Alderman Stefan mentioned. It, it almost sounds like a second step uh, as opposed to amending this document. It's, it's like if this document were to pass, then you'd propose to, uh, you know, take the 23rd Street site off the table and look at the Penn Avenue site, and uh, perhaps that best, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but perhaps that best could be accomplished by referring that, that document as a separate standalone document to the Committee of the Whole if uh, the underlying document passes. Thank you, Sterling McLean. Alderman DeBerg. Okay. <coughs> All right, it, it says uh, take uh, 23rd Street off the site. Everything is going to be given to the committee to hold. Just because it says here that it's taken off the table doesn't mean it can't be looked at. It, everybody here 
is the committee the whole? Everybody here is the council. If someone says, let's have Zimmerman take a look at 23rd Street. Everybody says, no, or the majority says, fine. So we look at 23rd Street. We look at 8th and High, or wherever they want to come up with. It's going to be up to when we have our meetings with the committee to whole, whoever comes up with a decent suggestion, that's where we're going to look. Thank you. Alderman Eberg. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I understand the resolution. What this really does is saying the only site we will look at is 9th and 10th. Resolutions direct us to do something. This directs us only to look at 9th and 10 to uh, eliminate Sheridan Park and also to eliminate 23rd Street from consideration. And I guess for me, it's hard to study something that we haven't studied, because I don't think we've studied 23rd Street. So I can't study something I haven't studied. So for me, I guess that's, that's my confusion. I would prefer at least to eliminate it based on cause. Alderman Berg, I'm going to call you. Please address the chair appropriately. Yes, Your Honor. We haven't. All right, we haven't uh, studied the Penn Avenue site. All right, we haven't uh, studied 23rd Street site. I'm suggesting we, they, everybody wanted an alternative. So many people said, we don't want Sheridan Park. We don't want 23rd Street site. They said, come up with something different. I come up with something different for the police department and the designers and whoever has to go along with them to see if this is a suitable site. If it's not suitable, then we go someplace else and study. It's, this is a starting point. This way, you, the police and, and Zimmerman can give us an idea if it's, if it's available or if it's suitable, and if it's not, then we come up with another site. Everybody was, uh, no Sheridan, no 23rd. This is an alternative site to give everybody a chance to, to find some, some place where we can satisfy everybody. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have a point of order. I thought I heard Alderman Stephan say he moved that, and I thought I heard Alderman Susher said she seconded a motion to uh, refer this to Committee of the Whole. This, well, there was this a amendment. motion made? If we, if we do that to amend that, I would also. I, I, uh, I, not really to an amendment. I think you'd have to treat it as a standalone motion, uh, motion or, or resolution. Yeah. Well, well, is my motion in order then or not? Uh, I guess it depends on how Alderman Berg wants to treat his document. If, if it's an amendment to this document, then I guess that amendment really. I don't think you could refer the amendment. I think you'd have to refer the amendment with the underlying document if you're going to refer anything. But uh, I would say if, if it's going to be an amendment to this document, that, that be acted on with the, you know, prior to this document being acted upon. Alderman well, Stephan, did that answer your question? But, uh, but I do think if Alderman Berg wanted, he could treat that motion as a standalone motion and not be tied to an amendment of this document. Right. That, and that would be the best way to keep it clean, move it to the committee of the whole, that gets taken care of by all 16 aldermen. So in this case, the council has the opportunity to vote the amendment down, and then Alderman Deber can bring it back into the committee of the whole. I think that could happen. Keeps it clean. Any further discussion? Not. Call the roll. Are you are clear on what we're voting on now? No. Okay. We're voting on, we are voting on the amendment that Alderman Berg did, the three paragraphs. That's what we're voting on, the amendment to Alderman Montemayor's resolution. And that amendment is the three paragraphs that he just read, taking a 23rd Street site off of the table, looking into investigating the new police station on the Penn Avenue site, And, and the Common Council move forward to place a new police station at that site and resolve the neighborhood issues surrounding Sheridan Park. That's what we'd be voting on, Dan, Alderman Berg's amendment. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. 
and if if that amendment would fail, we tonight could have um, you draw orders to prepare a resolution to present to committee of the whole that would include those three paragraphs um, at the next committee of the whole meeting, correct? Yes, and then it could be referred to committee of the whole. Everybody clear? Is everybody clear on what you're voting on? I still see confused faces. Okay, what you're voting on is Alderman Danberg's amendment to the resolution that's right now on the floor. The amendment would be three paragraphs to repeal, if the Common, Vols, Council, Common Council votes to repeal this resolution, the 23rd Street site is removed from consideration as a location, that's one of them. Be it further resolved that the Common Council hereby directs the Chief of Police, Deputy Chiefs, and Zimmerman to investigate building the new police station on the Penn Avenue site, bounded by the different streets seen it listed, and be it further resolved that the parties mentioned in the previous, be it further resolved, agree that the Penn Avenue site is a desirable location, the Common Council move forward to place the new police station at that site and resolve the neighborhood issues surrounding Sheraton Park. Three paragraphs, that's the amendment. So what I vote would be to vote for Alderman Berg's three paragraph amendment. Is everybody clear? And not to mix it up, and that is separate from Alderman Stephan's amendment to Alderman Montemayor, okay? Call the roll, please. Okay, Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. Kittleson. No. Manny. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. No. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Maybe. Six eyes, ten noes. Motion fails. Now we'll take a vote on the resolution as amended by Alderman Stefan. Pardon me. Do I have a direction from the council to draw a document? I'm asking you want to draw a document with that close to three paragraphs. You bet. And I will move that a document be drawn. Second. Uh, with the, the three paragraphs that Alderman um, Berg has presented to you, he gave you a copy of those? Yes. Uh, to be a resolution to uh, be referred to Committee of the Whole. Okay. There's a motion and a second, I believe. Under discussion, All right, Alderman Serta. I was just wondering if we would allow the public to speak first before I, I if, don't, where are you going to put that in? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council? Can we do um, Okay, I'm okay, right, right. Is there anybody that would like to address the council on the motion that we're going to refer to the committee of the whole? Otherwise, before we take a vote, we'll ask. No? Okay, then we'll ask you to, to speak on the, the main motion, which is to rescind, okay? Thank you. Okay. All eyes going to do this. We don't, we don't need a vote on this. Just okay. all eyes. So we'll take the vote. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair vote. Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a tip of the slung. Yeah. At this time, I did, I'd invite the public. I'm sorry. Excuse all me, Your Honor, but uh, right now we need a motion as amended. Oh, we haven't gotten that too? No. Okay. As amended, I would move that the document be put upon its passage. Okay. Okay. There's a second? Second. There's a motion to approve the motion, the resolution as amended, under discussion. Okay. Simply as amended. Okay. All eyes. You want, you want to open the floor? You want to open the floor now? Ready to open up the floor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. At this time. Is there any member of the public that would like to address the council on the motion to rescind as amended? Take mine off. Okay. Yes, uh, how do you want to handle this? Um, I'd like them to step up. I'd like you to, step, if you are wanting to speak, step up to the mic, give me your name and home address, and then you'll have three minutes, and I will call your time, just like we do with the public forum. So if you just want to take turns coming up. And your name? Uh, my name is Dimple Adams. I live at 1424 Virginia Avenue in Sheboygan. And you will have 
three minutes. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, um, just to make this as brief as possible, uh, there's two or three issues that I want to discuss here. Uh, one is with the Friends of the Park. Uh, it has been disconcerting to me as a taxpaying member to hear the meanness that's been going on with some of the letters to the editor and so forth about recalling older persons if they do not agree with with undoing the vote for Sheridan Park. I think that that should not even be in the conversation. And I had a lot more to say about that, but I'm not going to do it because I'm limited to three minutes. Um, okay, with the press, I think the press has been extremely unbiased about this situation, uh, again, with the Sheridan Park, and also uh, not very truthful at times. Yesterday, with their editorial, um, with all the things that they had in there. Uh, one of the things that they said was that there was equal number of Friends of the Park signs, or Save Sheridan Park signs, along with the Neighbors Against Drug signs. Well, my grandson and I went and counted, and we came up with 70 to 8. That is not equal. And that 70 Neighbors Against Drug signs for 8 against Neighbors saving the park signs. Uh, that is covering the blocks from Pennsylvania Avenue to Illinois Avenue, 13th Street to 15th Street. So it is definitely the Sheridan Park neighborhood. And speaking of the Sheridan Park neighborhood, we have spoke loud and clear over and over and over again. We spoke loud and clear with the election. On April 5th, we elected Donnie Van Akron from Ward 4 even though he lost in the district. We elected Gene Kettleson and Dennis Bauman in Ward 5. They were incumbents, and none of these three were Save the Park um, candidates that was endorsed by the press. Okay, last but not least, and the most important, is I support the Sheboygan Police Department. I think that we have a great police department. And I'd like a show of hands of everyone here tonight, including the council members, if you have had a complete tour of the Sheboygan Police Department. Okay, that, that's a good showing. Because if you haven't, I don't think you're qualified to speak about this issue. I was very privileged last week with being able to do that. And I saw for myself the two holding cells we needed the lease for. I saw the closet size evidence room. I saw the workout room, which is shared by, um, with the furnace. And maybe two, at most three, can go in there at one time. Excuse me, Dimple, your time is up. And just to let you know, it's got to be built now. No more waiting. Next person that would like to speak? Just come on up to the mic. Hi, could I have your name, please, sir? Uh, my name is Jeffrey Bubb. Jeffrey Bubb? Yeah. And your address, Jeffrey? Uh, 2906A South 10th Street. And you will have three minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it sounds like this decision has already been made, but maybe I can make people think a little bit. For about a year and a, for about a half a year, I've been talking and writing about the crime and safety of the Sheridan Park area and the benefits a police station there would bring. We know that it best serves the public there. We know that it best serves the police there. We know that the land is free. I'm sure we all have weighed the fact that the land is a park. But we also realized it was a park that found little use. Sat in the middle of a rough neighborhood and is, as many have put it, a shell of its former self. It's why the Common Council agreed to the site to begin with twice. Now, as we all know, the promise of a new police station there didn't last long. Sentiment over saving the park grew. People were asked to sign a petition, a petition that, in my mind, didn't fully clarify the entire situation at hand. Soon enough, however, there were some 3,000 signatures in favor of saving the park. Candidates running for alderman and mayor picked up on this wave of emotion and ran their campaigns on promise of saving the park. Before we could blink an eye, the April elections changed the complexion of the Common Council and, once, and the once great hope of solving multiple problems at the shared park site was in deep jeopardy. And why? Because suddenly some of us 
valued this rarely used, overlooked and neglected parkland? The alternative to this point has been the 23rd Street site, a site that we all know is, is not as central to the needs of the police or as beneficial to the needs of its surrounding neighborhood. Nonetheless, some insist that this is still the best place for a police station. Now, I don't know about you, but I've read directly from the Enberg Anderson report and there are still questions about the viability of that land. Quote, Volatile organic compounds should not prove to be a cost to the city of Sheboygan should they choose to move the police station to this site, as, as Sheboygan County seems to be the source of this contamination. Now, if any of you can tell me, without a doubt, that breaking land there won't cost a single penny for this city in chemical cleanup, then my concern is mute. But if not, then at the very least, this site ought to be studied further. So here we are, we're at a crossroads to what to do next for the city. I'm willing to bet that this common council will rescind the Sheridan Park site, despite everything I've mentioned. But it doesn't mean the ideas of a safe neighborhood and productive police station has to die. Recently, the mayor and aldermen have been talking about compromise. So here's what I propose. If we insist on not building at the Sheridan Park site, and the 23rd Street site looks questionable in terms of both location and foundation, then we need to look at other viable options. There are two places which come to mind. The old cargo plant on New Jersey Avenue, and the Penn Avenue site near 13th, like we were discussing. The Sheridan Park neighborhood would be pleased with either of these sites, for it still puts a centrally located police station nearby. Furthermore, the Pearl Parks people would be happy, for neither of these sites is or once was a park. Everybody is happy. So, in the unfortunate event that Sheridan Park is rescinded, I ask that the mayor and the Common Council <coughs> consider these suggestions. After all, failure to compromise at this point would make many here look awfully foolish. Thank you, Jeffrey. <coughs> Next person would like to get up and speak. Just come on up to the mic. Uh, yes, and I can have your name, please. Scott Lewandowski. And your address? 2201 Erie Avenue. Erie Avenue? Yes. And you will have three minutes, sir. OK. I want to thank the Common Council for allowing myself and other citizens of Sheboygan to speak tonight. I ask that all of you support the resolution to repeal the vote for destroying a 150-year-old plus Sheridan Park for a new police station. The people of Sheboygan have tried numerous ways to get you to listen to them, and we continue to be ignored. We were ignored when a petition for a referendum was presented even though it had 2,900 plus valid signatures and over 3,700 total signatures. Last month, the citizens of Sheboygan voted out the mayor and numerous aldermen who ignored the citizens of Sheboygan in regards to Sheridan Park. You now have a chance to show that you are listening to the citizens of Sheboygan and reunite this city and common council instead of driving a larger wedge between yourselves and the citizens of Sheboygan. Sheridan Park is one of the few places left in Sheboygan where we can walk on the same ground, not covered by concrete or blacktop, as the founding fathers of this city, who made this site a park before they made Sheboygan a city. This is one of the few places left where we can walk under the same trees and touch the same trees our city founders did, and you want to take this away from us, the citizens of Sheboygan. As a young boy, I went to Sheridan Park with my dad. As my dad told me, he went with his father as a little boy. This meant something to me, and it means more to me each day. I was never able to go to Sheridan Park with my dad's father, my grandpa, as he died 11 years before I was born. Sheridan Park gives me a connection to my grandfather, and also many other citizens of Sheboygan that I have read about in the old newspapers, and who passed away before I was born. When my parents first got married, they lived at 1322 Virginia Avenue, directly across from Sheridan Park. This is one of the houses that is scheduled to be torn down five to 10 years after the police station is built at Sheridan Park, if the police station is built there, as are all 21 other houses on the block north of Sheridan Park. How much money will be saved by building at Sheridan Park and buying and tearing down 22 houses? This plan was brought up at some of the aldermatic debates, but a de debate at the Kohler Arts Center, Renee Shusha was the third person to give her closing statement, and she brought this plan up. There were six incumbent aldermen that gave their closing statements after Mrs. Shusha 
and none of them said that this information was wrong. I am bringing this up to let the people in this room and watching on TV to know what other added expenses there will be with the Sheridan Park site. Also, next week I am signed up to speak again. I have come up with nine ideas so far to improve the area in and around the park. Scott, this includes a problem. Excuse me, your time is up. Okay, I'm on my last sentence. This includes a problem with garbage, crime, and other issues. I have already spoken to Mayor Perez about some of these ideas. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak, just please step up to the mic. <coughs> and can I have your name, sir? My name is Milton Storm, and I reside at 1736 Marvin Court. Marvin Court? Right. And you will have three minutes. I have lived and paid my property taxes for 40 years at 1736 Marvin Court. I came to Sheboygan here tomorrow. It will be 48 years out of the directly out of the military service. <clears throat> the thing that I would like to do is to address Mountain Mayor's resolution. I would like to have it removed that the park remain as a park forever. The other thing is that the friends of the Sheridan Park, I don't blame them, but one of our neighbor's drug signs was removed from somewhere and it was mounted one block north of Sheridan Park with the, on the back white side written, Save Sheridan Park. It was mounted with two wood sticks and put into the ground. The property owner or whoever resides at that already had his sign inside the fence. Now that is a crime. Now I'm not blaming the friends of Sheridan Park, but I think when we are going to protest that uh, we do it in a civil manner. So I'm addressing the resolution if we can remove that statement from the resolution. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? And your name, sir? Jason Shane, 1418 okay. Bluff Avenue, Apartment A. 1418A, Bluff Avenue? Correct. And Shibuya. you will have three minutes. I would like to thank the mayor and the elder persons and the plug for letting me speak today. I would like to ask the council to work together and work mm -hmm. on finding a site for the police station and not at Sheridan Park. These officers and the chief deserve to have a new police station and we need to work hard to find a site and not drag this out any longer. I've been given some reasons why we should build at Sheridan Park. These are the reasons and the solutions. Number one, there are drugs being sold all hours of the night. My solution is call the police. The park closes at 10. Number two, across the street, there is a litter and trash all over. Solution, if you can get the neighborhoods to clean up this problem and talk to the owners of the property to keep it clean or call your building inspector. Number three, no one plays there. Solution, if you look outside the park on weekends and after school, you will see the park occupied. I was there yesterday. I got a list of kids' names that were put down on a piece of paper given to the mayor. So instead of taking away from these kids, be a good neighbor and keep the park safe for these kids and let them have fun. Now I gave you solutions for your neighborhood problems. So let's find a new place to put this police station where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Just come on up to the mic. And can I have your name, sir? My name is Troy Nemuth, and my address is 630 South 13th Street. 630 South 13th, and how, how do you spell your last name, Troy? N-I-E-M-U-T-H. And you will have three minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I've spoke before at your meetings, and I've told you a couple of things that I've seen in my neighborhood. I've seen gang activity, I've seen crime, I've seen stolen vehicles parked in the park that I've reported. I have people telling me that I should just call the police when things are going on, and I have called the police, and I have stood forward. But what ended up happening to my own personal situation is I became a victim of gang violence for standing out. I had every bone in the left side of my face busted, and sometimes when I hear, the last time I spoke, I heard 
then uh, Alderman Juan Perez talking about crime living across the police station from where he's at, and personally I considered it an insult to compare minor vandalism to major bodily harm. That was an insult to me and to my neighborhood and to what's going on. Now another thing that I want to address the council before you make your decision tonight, we definitely need something that is centrally located. The other thing that I would like to address is I've been telling you people the things that I've seen in my neighborhood and one of the things that I did see in my neighborhood is within two weeks of the decision to build at Sheridan Park, two crack houses shut down and moved out. So remember that, that it does do something have a, having a police station there. That is the only beacon of light that I have seen in my neighborhood. Our police department is doing a wonderful job, doing the best they can. When I talk to police officers, they ask, I ask them, what could you use? What do you need? What tools do you need? And they say a police station. We made a decision to put a police station in Sheridan Park, and I, I honor the courage of the few aldermen that stood up to that and stuck to their guns that believe it is a gut feeling that this needs to go in that place. This is a situation where it's just, we have people, it's really easy to sit on the opposite side of town and say, there's no problem because I've lived on the opposite of town. I've lived in Sheboygan my entire life. I have had every single Christmas of my natural born life in my home because it was my grandparents' home before I bought it from my grandparents. And the situation has gone downhill and I feel like my, the back of the city has been turned on me and my neighborhood. Don't turn your backs on me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, whoever is next would like to go up. And can I have your name, please? Mary Bermke. Mary Bermke, B-E-R-M-K-E. Mm -hmm. 1507 South 14th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have three minutes. I would just like to make a comment. Everybody's bringing up about the drug signs. They are not just in Sheridan Park. They are all over the city. If you just drive around and notice the signs that are all over. So don't target Sheridan Park alone. We live on South 14th. We had a house two doors away from us. It took it four years to finally get the drug pushers out of there. Now we have one about a block and a half from us we're working on. So if you have drugs in your neighborhood, call the Neighbors Against Drugs. Don't just pinpoint one lonely park. They're all over. We live a, a block from uh, Franklin Park. I'm sure there's drugs going on up there, but we don't hear as much about it. And as far as that mess down at Sheridan Park, we drove by there the other day. Um, I put a letter in the paper, and after we saw it, it was swimming pools, furniture, it's the neighborhood that's contributing to this garbage. Sure, there's stuff down there from your factories, but most of it is uh, neighborhood done. And I think some of the yards, right on South 14th, I wrote to the building inspector about a house that was in bad shape. I wrote about the outlaw drug house, or um, a gang house. They came and they ripped it down after I wrote to the public uh, buildings inspector. But nobody said anything about that. They complained and complained and whined about that. Who did anything about it? Nobody that I know of. Where were the aldermen on that? But I wrote to the public thing. I'm not trying to take credit for it, but I'm just trying to tell you that some of this stuff that's in the paper, and you people are not going around and checking with the drugs, neighbors against drugs, so please do so. Find out you aren't the only one being targeted in Sheridan Park. I don't <coughs> like the drugs myself, and that's why we do it in our neighborhoods. Report it, take pictures, whatever you can do to prove that there's drugs in your neighborhood. The police respond. Thank you. Mr. Paulus, did you want to go next? I don't have too much to say. Can I, can I just get your address again, Mr. Paulus? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have three minutes, please. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for the privilege of standing here and saying congratulations to you, Mayor Perez, on your outstanding performance of revitalizing Sheboygan to a new high in diplomacy and competence. 
and your leadership. Unlike your detractors and some aldermen, you do not succumb to the old threats and political blackmail of what you have a perfect right to exercise in your position as mayor. You show strong, positive leadership by answering to problems, not personalities, in the face of numerous attacks. You justify their confidence in electing you mayor along with some new citizen elected aldermen. The intelligent citizens of Sheboygan see and applaud you, Mayor Perez, on your efforts for the citizens of our city. The interest in where Sheboygan is to go has been the most intense in decades as shown in this last election. The citizens spoke volumes about the need to return Sheboygan to fiscal responsibility. And the citizens spoke firmly, not once but twice, to save Sheridan Park now. But continued falsities and misinformation regarding the new police station continues to flow from the lips of a few aldermen and others, either by design or just plain stupidity. It's all a matter of record. The citizens can read. The citizens can listen to the experts. And the citizens do comprehend. Those particular aldermen who voted last week against Sheridan Park are quite frankly simply dead wrong. Three million less at 23rd Street. No pollution on the 23rd Street site. About 30,000 instead of 100,000 for your communication link. There is no soft ground of consequence at the 23rd Street site. Less expensive construction techniques today potentially really large savings with the county are just a few of the obvious facts. Excuse me, Mr. Paulus, your time is up. I may ask, humbly ask for another minute or two. We, we can't, we, we gotta let people, I'm sorry, Mr. Paulus. Thank you. Little, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to get up and speak? Jean? And can I get your name, please, and your home address? Sure. Gina Steinhardt, 1311 Maryland Avenue. 1311 Maryland. Mm -hmm. And you will have three minutes. OK. Wish somebody else wants to say something. Um, I am Michaela Steinhardt, um, her daughter. And I was going to say that um, the park isn't very safe. Because some gangs burned holes in the um, wooden play equipment, so they had to take the wooden play equipment down. And I think putting the police department there would keep it safe and they could build it back again. Thank you. <laughs> also, I'd like to thank the previous Common Council for all of their hard work concerning this issue as well as many other safety issues in our neighborhood. My neighbors are very tired of being fought about and fought with concerning the new police department at Sheridan Park. Mr. Mayor, if you are totally serious about working together and moving ahead, I say we compromise on the location of the police department. It sounds like you are working towards that, but um, some of these things are kind of iffy about whether 23rd Street is gonna be chosen or Sheridan Park is gonna be chosen. It's gotta be worked out to be more fair. Plus it should be like um, Troy said, centrally located. We do need it close by the Sheridan Park neighborhood. It's obvious if you walk down any of our roads that we do need police presence, not just driving through the neighborhood. We need them there. We need them there a lot. Um, because 
most of the, um, because both of these sides are not itch locations that no anybody wants, the, um, this, this argument is going nowhere and everybody's just fighting about it and it's just getting, it's in a no-win argument. We all agree that Sheridan Park neighborhood needs a lot of help and um, it's much more than just the park. We don't want it saved if it's going to be left the way it is. Criminals have been using it and when the police are called, they scatter into the woods across the street and get away easily. These two areas of green space are working together right now to aid the criminals' activities. I'm sure General Sheridan and his wife would be very unhappy with, to see what the, this park has come to and what it is be, being used for. Since building the police station in a park upsets many people, although most aren't even park neighbors, another site close to Sheridan Park should be considered. We should stop arguing, we should compromise, and choose a site that would work for everybody. Um, we need to work, instead of working against each other, we should work with each other. We want safety to be the most important issue here, not which site is better. Um, a child from our neighborhood took drugs to Sheridan Elementary School just last year and only received a three-day suspension for it. They still, the, him and his family still live there. Gina, I'm sorry, your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Would you like to go to the mic, please? And can I get your name and address, please? Uh, Frank Cozan, 2829 Erie Avenue. And could you let me know when I have a minute left, please? Excuse me? Could you let me know when I have a minute left? Certainly. And your time is three minutes, and you go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to the council again. Again, my subject is Sheridan Park, only this time my focus is different. I want to remind the council that Sheridan Park is not only an open green space for public recreation, but it is a memorial to a soldier, Union General Philip Sheridan. You should also be aware that uh, a soldier himself headed the efforts to honor Sheridan. This was a mayor of Sheboygan, a county sheriff, the renowned Colonel Bourne, who even in civilian life was referred to as a uh, colonel. His efforts subsequently resulted in a resolution by the council that this was to be a city park forever. So Sheridan Park is a tribute to a soldier, a tribute organized by another soldier, a tribute reflecting the great esteem with which the general public held the Civil War hero. Now the park status as a soldier's memorial, memorial might be more apparent if there were a statue, but none was ever erected. So it's easy for a modern council to disregard the intentions of the community back then. After all, it is 140 years since the end of the Civil War, and there's no one living with uh, any memories to come forward to protest a council's assault upon the memorial. There is a uh, Civil War poster that features a doe boy standing beside the grave of a comrade. The text says, if ye break faith, we shall not sleep. Well, I hope the council chooses to preserve the heritage of this park rather than break faith. I hope it chooses to respect the deepest values of its historic predecessors, the councils that preceded us, rather than break faith. And I hope that the council chooses to maintain the solemn links to the past, rather than break faith. I'll give you some perspective, there's another memorial close by. In 140 years, it could come under assault too. After all, in 2145, World War II will have been done and gone for 200 years, 170 years since Vietnam. 144 years since 9-11. This is the Sheboygan County War Memorial, Veterans Memorial. And I ask you, what president will you set? Because you know in the future land will be at a premium and somebody will say this is underused, this has fallen in disrepair, there's no one around to remember this, and it has utilitarian purposes. Please don't break the faith. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? If you'd like to step up to the mic. Good 
Mr. Capetillo, Mr. Capetillo, you need to go around, sir. Okay. Privilege of the floor. And can you give me your name and home address, please, sir? My name is Henry Capitello, and my address is 1619 North 38th Street, the town of Sheboygan. Okay. And you will have three minutes. Okay. I'm here representing Home Inc., um, the business that uh, I work for. And the, um, the reason I'm here is because we do pay property taxes. And, it, you know, I can sympathize with a lot of the people that have come up here and have have concerns regarding the uh, the problems that they have, the drugs, and the uh, the uh, police presence that, that's needed there. But you know what? Building a police station in that area is not the answer to that. The reason I say that, if, if you're going to be doing that, then you're probably going to have to be building more than one police station in the city of Sheboygan. You'll probably have to build a half dozen of them all over the city. And the reason I say that is because when I was in, working in Baltimore about six years ago, one of the biggest things that they had a uh, problem there was what they called forced entry. And just a week ago, I read in the Sheboygan Press where they had one forced entry and it was in, I think it was in Kentucky Avenue. So the problem that we see here is not going to be solved by building a police station, you're still going to have crime, not only there, but in other parts of the city. And sure, they may deter the criminals from being in that neighborhood, but you know what? They're going to go somewhere else, and they may be in your neighborhood. I think one of the things that you can learn from this is that there is a need for additional police officers, and I say that because we see them coming into our building, and we see the only deterrence that we have from anything is when the police are present and they're, they're in the area. I think that if, you're, if you really want to do something about crime, then additional police officers, and when I say additional police officers, I mean in the black and white units, the ones that respond, the ones that are there, that when you have a problem, they come there. And those, those are the people that are going to deter the crime in that area. It's not going to be by, by just building a police station in one area. And like I said, if, if you're looking at solving that problem, it's going to take more than one police station. You're going to be building more in, within the city of Sheboygan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Westfall? <coughs> And can I get your name and home address, please? Yes, Jack Westfall, 1317 North 3rd Street. Um, thank you, Mayor and Alder persons and fellow citizens. Um, it seems like a couple parameters um, there's some agreement on, which is uh, that there needs to be a facility and that Sheridan Park needs something in a presence uh, for protection. And what I find most disturbing isn't the debate, but the fact that a solution uh, that has been used in many other cities and has been used a decade ago in Racine was never considered in any of the reports. And why such a large trend was missing, um, you know, you can't make good decisions without all of the options on the table, considering them and going through them. And this is just obvious that that option was never on the table. What was done in Racine, and again it was done through community listening sessions, door-to-door -door surveys, and, and it was in neighborhoods far worse than we see here in Sheboygan, were neighborhood police centers. And those were simply confiscated drug houses that through volunteer labor and material were restored as neighborhood police centers, which had a presence there through rotation and so forth. And they were scattered like Mr. Uh, Capetillo, is it? You said have six of them. Well, they were able to have six of them. And those served as centers of economic development throughout Racine. Please contact former Mayor Smith, who initiated first the study and then the follow-up actions, or their current police chief, to find out how successful that was. Now, not that the city doesn't need a newer facility, but certainly there are options that you have not considered. I've not seen them in the reports. These are national trends. They've proved effective. Why you're not considering them, I find 
the most disturbing fact in this debate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be? Yes, why don't you come to the mic? And can I get your name, please, sir? Dan Verhassel. And your address? 705 Fairway Drive. Fairway, okay, and you will have three minutes. Thanks, everybody, for the opportunity to speak tonight. I think, um, you know, everybody knows my position. I'm speaking on behalf of the Friends of Sheridan Park, or not Sheridan Park, I've heard that so much tonight. It's actually Friends of Sheboygan's Parks. So we look beyond Sheridan Park. Um, but I think the, the new study that we saw here a month ago exposed a lot of flaws in the previous study, as was an example with the $3 million gap that we saw between the two studies. That at least begs the question of let's study this a little bit further. Um, the nice thing about keeping the park is it does provide an opportunity to revitalize that entire Sheridan Park neighborhood. Think how beautiful that could be in a few years if we really stuck some resources into that neighborhood. Um, parks are built, neighborhoods are built around parks, not around buildings like police stations. It'll help hold the property values of homes. It'll give kids a place to play. And it'll actually um, give us... By, by waiting and studying this report, it'll give us a complete and more comparative study. I think that was one of the problems is that we focused on Sheridan Park so hard is that we closed our eyes to everything else and, we, and as a result, we made a bad decision. Um, as far as Dimple Adams, I can, I can really empathize with you and I, I've wanted to talk to you for some time here now, but I can empathize with Dimple and with Gina and with Mr. Muth, is it? Nemuth. I really can because I mean I wouldn't want that in my immediate neighborhood. I do consider myself a park neighbor because I do plan on using the park. I, it is within walking distance to me. I'm just down the road on New Jersey Avenue. So I do consider myself someone who's going to be using it a lot as my little guy Noah gets older. Um, as far as Jean Kittleson's position, she was undecided at the time of the election. So um, whether the voice was of the police station was within Jean Kittleson can't really be said. Um, park signs. There are over 200 of them around the city, and I'll give you that there was 70 to 8 in that area. I, can, I can't argue that I didn't count them. Um, but one thing I do want to make clear is the Friends of Sheboygan Park, we want to improve Sheridan Park, and starting tomorrow morning, there will be a Sheridan Park fund drive put into effect to raise money for the Sheridan Park neighbors. And I, and I appreciate the challenge, Alderman Sigali, because we are definitely there. We're not just here to save the park, but we're actually there to revitalize it because I've seen old pictures of Sheridan Park and what a beautiful place that could be. And if you've got a beautiful park, you're going to have beautiful homes that come to follow and want to live in that area. So we do want to not just preserve the park, we want to actually improve it. I do appreciate Michaela getting up and speaking too because that's one of the things that do need to be improved about the park is the old equipment. I mean, I, I've seen the park, I've lived here now 15 years, and every year it just gets stripped out a little bit more. It's only been in the last year that we've made phone calls to get picnic tables and cookers out there, and it looks more like a park now with that equipment out there. So thanks, Mikhail, I appreciate that. Some of the things we're looking for with the Friends of Sheridan Park in the future is we want to put more lighting in Sheridan Park as a safety enhancement. We want more permanent tables and benches. We would like to in Aspire, and I'm not making any promises, but we'd like a covered pavilion. Excuse me, Dan, your three minutes are up. Sure. We'd like a covered pavilion in that area so that people can use it more regularly. So we Thank are you. behind saving the park Thank and you. preserving it. Thanks. Um, anyone else wishing to be heard? Please, sir. Can I get your name, please? My name is Paul Caston. Paul Caston? Yeah. And K-A-S-T-E-N? Yes. And your home address? I live at 909 South 14th Street. South 14th. And you will have three minutes. All right. Um, well, when I came here tonight, I really wasn't going to say anything to you, but um, I thank you for the chance to speak. Um, after listening to the different opinions on both sides of it, it seems to me that we all agree that having a park is a, a good idea, but we also have to face the issue of the safety in our neighborhood. And it seems like to me that if we can address that safety problem in our neighborhood, that we could save Sheridan Park, and I think everybody would be happy. I'm um, talking with my neighbors. That was one of the reasons why they thought that the police department would be a good idea there is because that would kind of send a message to uh, drug people that, you know, we're not going to accept that kind of behavior in our neighborhood. Um, I think I heard suggestions about cleaning up the park, revitalizing the park, revitalizing the neighborhood. I think that's the way to go. Where I live, I live right on 14th Street, so I don't 
have to walk past all the stuff that the other people talk about, but, but I drive back there and I, I know all the things that I, they've been saying about the trash and stuff like that, it's all true. You know, the neighborhood needs a lot of help. And if we're gonna start losing one neighborhood after another, eventually Sheboygan's no longer gonna be a good place to live. Now I've lived here since 1993 is when we moved in. And uh, I moved up here because of the cost of homes is cheaper. But I can tell you one thing, after living here, from Sockville and, and Grafton down by Milwaukee that I'm proud to live in Sheboygan. Sheboygan's a great city. We got a lot going for us. We need to be careful how we do this, that we don't lose one neighborhood after another and it's gonna become a place where nobody wants to live. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mike? And your name, please. This is Mike Warner. And 20, your address. 2327 East Shelley Court in Chibuana. 2327 East Shelley. And you will have three minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and citizens. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. This Common Council has a great challenge before them. Never in the past 40 years has the city of Sheboygan come this close to filling one of its most urgent needs, and that is the building of a new police station. You have a lot to consider tonight. Do you set a dangerous press procedural precedent? Do you build an adequate police facility in a central location that will best serve the city well into the future, or do you cave and build a mediocre facility that is poorly located and unlikely to serve the future needs of the police, the city, and its taxpayers? In answer to the first question, last summer the council voted 11 to four to move forward. They then voted again two weeks later to move forward. The council then voted to file the petition, a petition that has been misused by many, with campaign literature claiming nearly 4,000 signatures, with speakers at this podium claiming the same nearly 4,000 signatures, yet it had barely 2,900 legal signatures. I guess to some legal does not matter. Then the council approved the Zimmerman Design Group as the architect. Four clear choices, four clear decisions. When can someone depend on the solid decisions made by the City of Sheboygan's Common Council? Is, it, is that time only when there's no political campaign? Think about this, the marina, 10,000 signatures against the building of the marina. And the council at that time was hailed by the media as heroic for filing that petition and building the marina. If you rescind, you will set a precedent and your decisions will be suspect especially if one, two, or three of you decide you don't like the decision that was made. Will every major decision this council makes now be challenged? The marina is a success in many ways. Maybe it is not financially as of yet, but you have to look at what it provides beyond financial rewards. The marina redefined Sheboygan, redirected the riverfront, and has spilt across the river to the South Pier District. And I am confident that it will continue to redefine and enhance our lake and our riverfront in Sheboygan for years to come. The previous Common Council's decisions, all four of them, to build at Sheridan Park were and are just as solid. The reasons were clearly stated. The decisions were based on facts and the best interests of Sheboygan's long-term needs. So be careful when you make your decision. It may not stand. I believe the facts are irrefutable that a centrally located, well-built, City of Sheboygan Police Station will be an important part of our city's future. <clears throat> in cities across America, police stations are being made a part of the community. No longer fortresses, but instead an integral part of our community and the people they serve. And I believe it is important that you consider that when Excuse you decide me, Warner, where to build the new police station for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Yes. And can you state your name and home address, please? My name's Ed Wachowski, <clears throat> and my address is 2632 North 8th. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I've heard a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion back here, and I've heard a lot of emotion there. I've seen, since this came up as far as the police station, alderman against alderman, neighbor against neighbor. I'm not for building the police station in Sheridan Park. I'm not against building the police station in Sheridan Park. I'm not for 23rd Street. I'm not against 23rd Street. I'm not for building a police station. 
I'm not against building a police station. But I'll tell you what I am for. I read the 114-page report, the first report. And I think what has caused the entire problem is that the process was flawed. You had a little box and said, just take a look at these locations. And the locations that were picked, Sheridan Park had to come out first. Then you had your last study, and it looked at Sheridan Park versus 23rd Street. Then take a look at anything else. Well, again, 23rd Street, cost-wise, has to come out against Sheridan Park. If you were my children, I mean all of you, if you were my children, what would you do? You'd say, time out. Go to your room, settle down, and when you're calmed down, we'll have some cool heads, and we'll talk about it intelligently and not talk with a lot of emotion. I ask you, take a time out. Remove that box. Start the process, but have a timeline. Because I can imagine the frustration of the police department at this point, must, they must say, what the heck are you people doing? Why don't you get your act together? And I say, get your act together. Let's have a new study, a timeline, and let's move forward. And above all, I ask you, the older people, and it's hard for me to say that because I'm old school, so I'm going to say older men, okay? You were elected to lead. I ask you to do that. Lead. Don't divide the city anymore. Don't have neighbor against neighbor. And please, get rid of the nastiness that I've seen here and the blocks of people that said, I'm for this, I'm for this. Work together. That's what you were elected for. Thank you very much. I hope I've under the three minutes. You Better. are. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Yes. <coughs> and can I have your name and home address, please? Yes, my uh, name is Al Shervin. I'm a deputy chief with the city of Sheboygan. Uh, my home address is 5311 Heatherfield Court in town of Sheboygan. I excuse me, 5311 what? Heatherfield Court. Heatherfield, okay. Uh, there's, just, three minutes. There's, there's just two points that I'd, that I'd like to make here. On behalf of the police department, our, the most significant issue for us is, is, a central, is a central location to just to be able to deliver the services. The second thing I think we're all in agreement is that we, that we do need a new police department. But I'll address the importance of the central location. When arrests are made, we have to bring somebody in. If a, if a police station is located on one side of a town, we've got a long ways to go. If citizens are located on opposite ends of the city, they've got to drive that distance in order to come down to the station to, to, to get the services. So if, if we would be looking at, at where we would be looking to go is our first priority is a, is a central location for the convenience of, of all the citizens. So it's the officers are uh, dispatched all over the city. They're in their squads. But the issue is when they bring in prisoners or if they have to bring in uh, uh, paperwork, those are, those are long distances to drive. Uh, somebody made a comment about precincts, so having six or seven precincts. Frankly, on many times, we only have six or seven officers out on the road. So it's a very good idea but it would end up being a supervisory problem in, uh, in staffing these areas. So really, just one police department would be effective for a city our size. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak? <coughs> Guess not. Thank you, City Clerk Richards. Is there any other older person that would like to have a final? <coughs> Alderman Pontemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Naturally, you know, I'd want to say something about my resolution. This is a, a pure resolution. Save Sheridan Park. Get on with finding another site. We need a police station. The community, the citizens of Sheboygan, need a police station. So let's get on with finding a new site. And remember, the city planning department energetically opposed the use of a park to be used in the city of Sheboygan. And they are our experts. Remember, the Sheboygan long range comprehensive plan includes developments of parks and green spaces. Remember that munis municipality magazine we received that had a long article about the value, monetarily and culturally, about parks in cities. 
Remember the urban specialists who talk to us about what happens when police stations or municipal buildings are built in neighborhoods. Crime goes up, not down. Parks, crime goes down. And imagine if there's crime in the park now, putting the police station will make it worse. Urban planners mandate parks and green spaces. And I know the Building Use Committee thought that that one particular square block in the whole of Sheboygan was the only place to build it. I say there are other places that will work as well, probably better. Remember that. Um, Attorney Steve McLean, can you give us some information about the legal ramifications of the architectural group? Thank you. Attorney McLean. Um, that, that's one issue that uh, you need to consider if uh, you do repeal the prior resolution is uh, in January of this year, uh, council authorized and a uh, contract was entered into with Zimmerman Design Group. Uh, the contract, I've got a copy of the uh, AIA st sort of standard uh, architectural design contract. Uh, I don't have the RFP or the scope of work that went with it, but a couple items in here that uh, I should highlight just so you're aware uh, prior to your vote. Uh, the contract does indicate that the anticipated project site is the Sheridan Park property at 14th and New Jersey. Um, I guess I, I read from that that it's not cast in stone, but that was what was anticipated. Uh, there are, the, the contract is for $535,000. Uh, it calls for Zimmerman Design Group to uh, engage in architectural service in five phases. And uh, it was contemplated in uh, section 2.33 that uh, at the conclusion of the design development phase on or around May 31, architectural services shall be halted to allow the owner to budget the project. Upon budgetary action by the owner, the construction document phase shall commence on or around November 1, 2005. So it was kind of built in also to the contract that there's going to be, uh, I'm going to use the phrase time out, uh, between June and November, it was contemplated by the parties that there would be need to get the financing aspects of the project in place uh, and that the, the uh, architect would be somewhat on hold during that period. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, step back a second. I started talking about the five phases. The design development phase is the second phase. Uh, currently, to my knowledge, we're still in the first phase, which is the schematic design phase. And uh, the result of the schematic design phase is that the architect submits to the owner a preliminary estimate of construction costs and sort of a schematic consisting of drawings and documents illustrating scale and relationship of project components. So it's sort of a, a, a schematic as opposed to construction drawings or anything like that that relate to a specific site. Um, my understanding again is we're about halfway into the first phase based on, I talked to uh, purchasing agent Kim Verhels uh, today, we've expended $12,000 to date, and we received a bill for another $28,000 worth of service. So that's $40,000 uh, of work that the architect has, has performed. Um, the first phase, as far as the draw schedule, calls for that amounting to about 15% of the work. 15% of the work is around $80,000. So uh, based on what's been submitted for billing, we're about halfway into the first phase, which is the schematic design phase. Uh, the biggest phase is the third. That's 
uh, I mentioned the design development phase as the second already, which we haven't got to. The third phase, the construction documents phase, is 40% of the project, and that's, that's where the architect actually uh, draws the plans and specs for the spe specific site. Uh, and, you know, I was at the committee of the whole meeting. The council was obviously there also when uh, representatives from Zimmerman were talking about uh, the work that they had engaged in to this point was more conceptual, dealing with uh, needs assessments and so forth, uh, uh, that a, a lot of that information can be applied, uh, to my understanding, to any site that the council were to choose. Um, there is one provision in here that the council needs to be aware of, and that has to do with uh, the ability of the parties to terminate or suspend the project. Um, and that's in Article 8. It's titled Termination or Suspension. And uh, <clears throat> indicates in a couple of spots, if the project is suspended by the owner for more than 30 consecutive days, um, the architect is entitled to be compensated for his services prior to the suspension. And if the project's then resumed, uh, the architect is entitled to be compensated for any costs he might have been incurred due to the interruption and resumption of the services. Um, also, if the work is suspended for more than 90 days, the architect can terminate the agreement uh, without cause. Basically, uh, they're saying, or could say that, uh, you know, you've suspended it for more than 90 days, uh, I'm going elsewhere, I've got other things to do. They could terminate, and one of the provisions in the standard AIA documents, in that event, uh, where the Termination is no fault of the architect. The architect can be compensated for the services performed prior to termination, together with reimbursable expenses then due, and all termination expenses. And the definition of termination expenses, uh, among other things, includes, uh, it says, plus an amount for the architect's anticipated profit on the value of the services not performed by the architect. Uh, so that's kind of a lost profits type of uh, uh, remuneration. Now that's, it's not defined in here as to how you calculate that and uh, I don't know if Zimmerman Design Group would would even seek that as a remedy. Uh, I would doubt it at this stage of the proceedings um, and I, to my knowledge, uh, Zimmerman has been aware, they've been to these meetings, is aware of the issues that uh, the city has had over this the site, and uh, I think they've been very patient. They were willing to work with the city. Um, uh, they do have a contract to design a police station, and I think they'd like to continue that contract and design a police station for the city somewhere. Uh, and if they are allowed to do that, I don't see that we're going to end up with a bunch of contract issues over suspensions and terminations. But uh, I just wanted to point out those things that are in the contract that uh, I don't want people coming back and saying in six months, why didn't you tell us this? Uh, uh, I did place a call to Zimmerman uh, last either Thursday or Friday because Kim Verhulst was on vacation last week and wasn't able to talk to him last week uh, to get their sense of things. I, I didn't hear back from them. Uh, I have no reason to assume anything other than what I've mentioned to you that uh, I think they understand where we are in the process and are willing to work with the city. I think they want to be treated fairly though and uh, uh, I, I think the only way you'd have an issue is if you picked another site and then you said, well, now that we've got another site, let's uh, get another architect. I think then you'd have a contractual issue. Other than that, you're probably okay. But, uh, Thank you. All right, Alderman Thank Mottler. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman D. Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, if a yes vote now on this whole document, we're voting on the whole document, correct? Yep. As amended. Pardon? It would be as amended according to Alderman Stephan's amendment, which would take out the last be it further resolved and replaced. Yeah, I don't worry about all these that we just brought in. 
the but everything else is in here. Well, then I'm going to have to ask for a separate vote. And uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council hereby repeals resolution number 590405. I would like a roll call vote on that, a separate vote on that. I'll and I vote the people that voted for Sheridan Park before. Stand by your guns. Don't give up. Show the people that you said you were voting for that you're not going to knuckle under to special interest groups or business groups or people from a different form of government. Stand by your guns. Walk out of here with your head held up high and keep your integrity. Thank you. Um, Owen Berg, I just wanted to point out that the, it is one document as amended on the council floor. It cannot be, you cannot call a separate vote on different issues in the document. Yes. I agree with the mayor on that. The, the one thing that could be done is, would be to make a motion to amend the document to exclude everything but that one paragraph and then vote on that paragraph. Alderman Vanderwheeling. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. It's been a while since I talked. I have a prepared statement that I'd like to read. It was 30 pages, but I got it down to two. <laughs> Last summer, before I voted on Sheridan Park for the first time, I took my children to the park quite often. I did this so that I was aware of how many people attended the park and that I would be comfortable with the decision that I would make regarding the park. While we were there, there was never more than one person at that park. The night that I voted for the first time on building the police station at Sheridan, my son was angry with me and my daughter cried. They accepted my decision after I explained why I did it, but to this day my six-year-old daughter still says that I'm sassy for wanting to take the park. I've never voted based on my personal feelings or emotions. If I would do this, our city would have many more four-way stops than it already has. In politics, when decisions are based mostly on emotions and personal feelings, it can become dangerous. When this happens, it is easy to go to extremes to get what the person wants and is passionate about. Suddenly, promises are made and threats are handed out liberally. I've never backed down or changed my vote because of deals, promises, or threats. I've always voted based on my constituency and my morals. I always will. When I talk to people in my district about the new police station, I often hear them say, just build it already. This council needs to stop fighting over where to build it and to just break ground on a new station. My priority is to see a new police station built and to see the area of Sheridan Park improved. I don't believe that either one will happen if we continue to push for Sheridan Park as a location for the station. This council can play games with funding and citizens groups can petition how we fund items Basically, the city could come to a screeching halt because we disagree about where to put a police station. That is no way to run a city. Therefore, the reason I would change my vote is to get a police station built and the neighborhood cleaned up. If this council does not build on Sheridan Park, we cannot forget about the neighborhood. Gina Steinert has worked too hard to bring her neighborhood to our attention to just forget about it. She has been working for years to have her area improved and change into a neighborhood that Gina, her neighbors, and their children deserve. The problem in the Sheridan Park area is more than just a police issue. The problems also involve building inspection and landowners that stop caring. I ask you, Mayor Perez, and this Common Council to work with Gina Steiner, her neighbors, and Paula Enders to make the neighborhood surrounding Sheridan Park the best neighborhood that it has been in 75 years. We have the tools to make this an area to be proud of. We just need to work together to do it. No neighborhood in Sheboygan should be a victim of poor landlords and selfish citizens. The neighborhood of Sheridan Park is no different. And I ask every citizen who became involved with their city government, be, government because of Sheridan Park to refocus. If the police station is not built at that location, I ask you to work together to make that neighborhood a great place to visit and to live. It is more than just a place where a park sits. It is a place where fellow Sheboyganites call home. If the park is saved tonight, I ask you now to save the neighborhood. Don't turn your back on these residents. 
And remember, if the council rescinds this vote tonight, it does not mean we are going with the North 23rd Street site. We still have to determine what other sites to locate it at. And it needs to be centrally located. And if I could ask Paulette to speak about certain things we can do in that neighborhood. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. I know that I spoke to Alderperson um, Vander Willey about the, um, the master planning that was approved by the Common Council recently. And that's what it actually is, is a Harbor Center Phase 3. There was a, a Harbor Center master plan, Phase 1, and then it was updated with a Phase 2. And now we're moving into Phase 3, and we're partnering with the Development Corporation. And one of the neighborhoods that's actually a part of this plan, and it, it's, um, whether it's by coincidence or not, it just <coughs> happens that one of the first districts that we're going to look at is 8th Street, Indiana, up Commerce Street to 14th, which includes the Sheridan Park neighborhood. And so not only were we going to look at the park and whether or not there was a police station there or not, but actually look at that neighborhood and redeveloping <coughs> that neighborhood. Alderman D. Berg. Forget it, I'll make my voice heard when we take a roll call vote. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I've been pretty quiet throughout these uh, last couple of weeks concerning the uh, Sheridan Park neighborhood and the building of the police station. Does anyone remember at all when the two baseball parks, or the, the baseball and the softball park were built. Those two basically were built, uh, I can't tell you exactly when, but they were there to replace a different park. The former Legion Park. Do we remember, does anyone remember Legion Park? There we go, I see one in the audience that I know for a fact that would remember it because he's now employed at the place, or was now, was employed at the place that replaced Legion Park, American Orthodontics. The city at the time was looking and looking and looking to unload Legion Park because they built the two new softball, baseball diamonds. There were no protests at the time because a park was being destroyed. A uh, business replaced that park. My wife tells me, I didn't grow up in Sheboygan, so I can't, I can't be uh, uh, able to remember this, but she told me that, that she went there, of course, to watch donkey baseball, of all things. Other people told me that they went there to watch football games, baseball games. Eventually it became quite the dilapidated area and did need something done with it. And that's when the city decided to replace it. I'm not saying let's destroy another park, but I mean that was a park that really at the time no one cared about. And just something just to be back into consideration. I've received dozens of phone calls within the last couple of weeks. The most phone calls ever were today. And the calls today basically were from people and in emails, mind you, that said, save Sheridan Park. Only one of those phone calls came from a constituent of mine within my district that said, Mr. Bauman, your mind was made up several times. Don't change it. Yes, there are other people in my district, too, that called me. As for the numbers, they were basically even. So I'm torn right now. What should I do? What should I really do? It, 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 it's, I, I don't know what to do right now be very honest, listening to everyone here in the audience tonight. It was pretty much even as to who was for, who was against, who were undecided. So I'm kind of wondering, where are all those 2,900 people that did sign that petition and say, um, let's save that park? Were they all here tonight? No, they couldn't be here tonight. And I can understand that. But I'm torn at the moment. I really don't know what to do. Alderman Eberg. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
I've been on this side of the bar for about three weeks, and I think it's real easy to understand why we only build a police station once every 100 years. Uh, 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 we've heard from uh, the police in terms of their needs. We've heard from the friends of the park in terms of their needs and issues. We've heard from the neighbors of the park. And there's yet one group we haven't heard from, and they're the taxpayers. They're the folks that buy the bullets that we shoot at each other up here every couple of weeks. And originally, I was, uh, had approached Alderman Montemayor to keep Sheridan Park uh, on the table in terms of a point of discussion. Uh, that got me into a lot of trouble. Uh, Mayor, you and I had uh, a frank conversation on that. We've had a couple of frank conversations, and we're probably going to have more. Uh, Alderman Montemayor, uh, you and I have had a number of energetic conversations that have dealt with this issue. My specific concern was that without having cost data on Sheridan Park, we will be like somebody driving down the road, always looking in the rearview mirror, because we won't be able to understand the cost and the information. After talking with Attorney McLean and Alderman Montemayor, uh, I, now I'm pleased to uh, give my wholehearted support to this resolution because we'll have that cost data. We'll be able, with phase one, to say this is what the building would look like and this is what it would cost. And I think that's responsive and I think that to a large degree addresses the concerns of the, of the taxpayers. And also, it allows taxpayers to have their input in terms of their degree of tolerance uh, for our decisions, because sooner or later, this is going to translate into raising, uh, if you would, the tax levy. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. One of the things that was mentioned here tonight, which I appreciate, was um, the, dis the ability to make decisions based upon emotion. Um, what I'm going to say in respect to those individuals who have a moral conviction of never taking a park what I say doesn't matter because facts don't matter. And to those individuals, I can respect that opinion. But as an older person, I cannot make my de decision solely based on emotion. It is my responsibility to number one, do the homework. And I would encourage my fellow older persons to do the same because if you don't do your own homework, just listening, everybody will sound Everything sounds good, a little bit of here and a little bit of there. If you do the homework, and I have a clear conscience, I've looked at the sites. I was the one when I asked, when Moyer gave their presentation about the land acquisition costs, why they weren't incorporated, and they just said they told me not to. I asked them why there was a green roof on Sheridan Park and not the 23rd site. They said, because we're just going to put the grass you take away and put it on, on top of the roof. That wasn't good for me at $400,000. I'm asking those questions because I'm doing my homework. And second, I take into consideration the concerns of the citizen and those in my district. I too, Mr. Bauman, am split as far as the phone calls. And that's really hard because if it was one way, you'd make my job easier. However, I think it is fair to mention for those individuals who feel that green space is at jeopardy, we have to keep in mind that thanks to the Garten family, this city just got 35 acres donated as parkland to the city of Sheboygan. I, I see another concern here, and that is, I don't know if people are aware of that, but and for those of you who are new on the council, you, you probably don't know this, but initially when we were going to build a police station, we were told that we were going to build the Taj Mahal. And then once that got, that wouldn't sidetrack us, the next thing was the 23rd site. The 23rd site has been used continuously to discredit Sheridan Park. And the Moyers, if you look at their report, interesting enough, you can still build at Sheridan Park. I believe it was a win-win, and I'll still continue to believe that, that it was a win-win for the neighborhood, the community, and our police department. And for, for the input that we received from the, the friends of Sheridan Park, that was taken into consideration. So all their efforts weren't lost. Because of their input, there was a compromise in building the building at Sheridan Park. It was scaled back from the front to save the memorial to the soldier, to save some of the trees. It was a win-win. And I think, there's been, I think there's been a good job at generating so much doubt that we lost our focus. 
but I'm not going to change my vote because I did my homework and I'm going to stick by it, not only as an older person, but as a citizen <coughs> and as a child who grew up in that neighborhood. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mayor. I have to agree with Alderman Montemayor and her comment that we do have uh, multiple locations uh, that, that would uh, suit our purpose for a new police station. In fact, we're rather fortunate. We have the problem that we have so many good, good locations that have never even been looked at. And um, I keep getting emails um, every day giving me new ideas and new suggestions on where we should be looking. Um, obviously, we do uh, have a very controversial issue with Sheridan Park. Um, if this resolution fails tonight uh, in moving the location out of the park, I see numerous obstacles in our way in our attempt to move forward. Now, I'm only a freshman alderman, but it is my understanding that one of the first steps that we would do if, if it were to stay in the park is that we would need to apply for the bonding. Basically, the bonding is uh, getting the financing in line to move ahead with the police station. And this group would have to pass an authorizing resolution. Once the authorizing resolution is passed, the public has 30 days to file a petition for a public referendum. And um, based on some of the things I've seen in the past, I'm pretty confident that a referendum would probably uh, come our way. But the question on the referendum would not be, should we build in Sheridan Park? The question would be, should the city issue $10 million in bonds for the police station? And if that fails, if that referendum question were to fail, I think that set us back a good 10 years. So, um, but I guess on the other hand, if that were to pass, or if we were moving on to a situation where we needed to make a budget transfer, we would need a two-thirds majority on the floor to make it happen. The mayor still has veto power, and I believe then if you wanted to overturn that, you would need a three-quarters majority vote. I mean, there would be so many delays in sticking with the Sheridan, Sheridan site um, that I think that now is the time to change the location so we can all agree where to build the new police station and break ground as soon as possible. When you think about what is our objective, what's our goal? Our goal is to get that police station built as soon as possible. And I'm just very concerned that if we stick with the Sheridan Park site, we're going to delay the process and possibly jeopardize the whole thing with the potential of going to a public referendum on the bonding. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to say I do believe that the taxpayers have spoken when they voted to put Mayor Perez in office and to replace a few of the aldermen. And I think our city is so divided right now over this park. And if we continue doing this, it's just going to continue to divide us. And it's time now to put it to bed. Let's move on. Let's get a different site. Like Alderman Shusha said, there are many sites out there to pick from. And let's just move on. Let's get this resolution passed, and let's build a new police station someplace else. Alderman Sarah. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just, I appreciate that you've been forthright and honest in just saying that basically that if, if, if it would just happen, that the cards would fall, that we build at Sheridan Park, the fear factor has been utilized, that there could be other stalling tactics. And I'll tell you, if it doesn't fall in my favor, I will continue to say this. I will work together as a team. I won't stall the project. I'm not going to use fear factors and saying I'm going to run out and get. That's part of teamwork. And I think we need to be careful in setting that, especially, and I hope the press is getting this, because as teamwork goes, it's been said here tonight that if it doesn't fall a certain way, there's going to be some tactic to utilize. And you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to be bigger in this, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to move forward with you. I'm fine with that. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Susha. Um, I want to apologize if my comments were mistaken as a threat in any way. I was just trying to clarify the process, and I was expecting someone to correct me if I was incorrect, because I am only a freshman <coughs> alderman, and I would like to rely on the expertise of the other alderman if I don't understand the process uh, with the way things go. So I'm sorry if my comments were mistaken in any way. Alderman Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, talking to the parks people last week, and talking to other aldermen and things, um, the one question I had is if we save this park, which I'm in favor of, 
what are we going to do to revitalize this park? And I've heard people commit from both the city and the uh, public that have been trying to save the park to definitely put some effort into saving this park, which is going to help revitalize that neighborhood. But I also want to see these people in that neighborhood be helped. We need to get the building inspection department, the police, whatever it takes into that neighborhood and get the, the situation resolved over there. By building a police station there is not going to fix the problem. <clears throat> They're just going to move the problem down the road. I mean, we have a situation here where a person was assaulted or attacked over mm -hmm. here on New York Avenue at 7 o'clock in the morning a couple of years ago. I mean, does a police station mean we're going to be safe? We've got drug trafficking and uh, other problems happening right here in the downtown area within a block of this very building. Does this building stop crime from happening? No. What we need to do is get the park taken care of, get on with this police station, and put this to bed, which should have been taken care of 50 years ago. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess the bottom line for me is we need a police station that is centrally located, and it's a neighborhood police station, that it's easily accessible to all the taxpayers in Sheboygan to go. I just, I, um, I feel our policemen uh, deserve the benefit of the doubt where they feel there would be best location of this police station and to me it's not on the North 23rd Street site. Thank you. And if I could add just one more thing to Mr. Westfeld. Um, I just want him to know that yes, we, if you remember correctly, a document was um, uh, given to the council, I think it was um, last year, concerning uh, satellite stations, and it was given to the Special Projects Committee, but at that time it just was felt that it wasn't feasible. So I just wanted him to know that, yes, we did look at those things. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. We will call the roll. And can I get a I'm sorry. Can I get a clarification, Alderman Stefan? Um, when we vote on the amendment, you want to take the last be it further resolved paragraph out and replace it with your amended be it further resolved? Not the last one on the first page, the one on the second page. The very last be it further resolved? Correct. Thank you. Okay, does everyone, everybody understand what we're voting on, the amendment? No. Okay, we're going to be yeah, voting on, on well, we haven't voted on the resolution as amended. So this is the final vote, and that amendment is Alderman Stephan's paragraph that will go at the very end of the document to replace the last paragraph. Are you clear? So what we're saying is this is a vote to resend our vote on Sheridan Park? Is this what it... This is the original resolution. To with, resend our vote? Yes. Okay. With the last paragraph being changed to Alderman Stephan's last paragraph. Correct, Alderman Stephan? Yep. Okay. So an I vote would be to repeal with that amendment. And just, oh, Alder McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. And just so everybody clicked, and that would mean that all the documents would be transferred to the Committee of the Whole, and the Committee of the Whole would be called to discuss new sites. Yes. Instead of building use being in charge, it would be going to the Committee of the Whole. And establish a process right. for site selection. Can I read you the paragraph? That, would you like me to read you the paragraph? Okay. The very last, do you have your document in front of you? The very last, be it further resolved, read right at the end, it's on the second, yes, would be replaced to read that the Common Council hereby requests the Committee of the Whole to establish and implement the process for selection of a site for construction of the new police station and to investigate and make further <laughs> recommendations to the Council for the Council's use in making a final site selection. That's the amendment. The rest of the resolution would stand as written. Alderman D. Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. If I can get my fuzzy ball off here. In other words, if we vote yes, that means we're rescinding our vote. That's what, yes. that's what they're kicking yes. around. They're going around about. Okay. Are we clear? Yeah, yeah. This is res as amended. This is to rescind the vote. Please, please call the vote, Madam Clerk. Um, Alderman Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. 
Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. The vote is 11 to 5. Motion carries. A motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'm sorry. All the remaining. Thank you. Uh, if it's okay, just real quickly, I want to remind people Friday and Saturday, Rockets for Schools. Enjoy. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. There he is. He's the caller. He's the general. And another timeout, this time by Beaver Dam. Let's see that one again, Scott. Hartman hit him first. Let's see who finishes him off. Woofta. <laughs> <laughs> that was all Hartman that time. <laughs> I think that was the first time he nailed him. Just a junior, outstanding. Consecutive four-yard losses for Rentmeester. You know, and that really... Have they controlled him? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that really forces us of the hand of Beaver Dam, which is not their strength, is throwing the football. And, boy, you just... They had right in the pay dirt there, 10 yards away, 11 yards away. Now they're 20 yards away. Two you know, plays is all you got to have, Red. On that second play, he hit him in the backfield, knocked him back. <laughs> Rentmeester is on his feet, barely staggering, and then he got finished off by a second South defender. What a play. We'll call it the 20-yard line. It's third down and 17. There's one minute exactly left on the clock. Cover two here on D. Cover two. South blitzing again. Blitzer is picked up. Keen looking in the end zone. Incomplete. Okay. Double coverage, the main defender back there was number eight, Alan Conrad. A lot of contact, both offense and defense, and good no call by the officials, that's for sure, because I'll tell you what, uh, Longfield pushed off just as much. Here you're gonna see it. Just arriving a little late for South, was majorly. One play, Marty. This is it. One thing you gotta like, Coach, is you're forcing them to do things that they're not comfortable with, and that, of course, is passing the ball. Well, you got the parents, the students, everybody's up here. Like I said, this place is pretty full, and Beaver Dam's gonna burn their last timeout, I believe, or South call timeout. South call the timeout to discuss the defense, and one thing I like, Coach, is when they run these parents' nights, first home game of the season. Let them know what it's all about, Hopefully you can get them back, come to some more games, and a yep. performance like this certainly has to inspire a lot of those parents to want to come back and watch their children. Well, I tell you, win or loss, this has just been an exciting game, and it would be so much better if they can come away with a win. Get it's your exciting guys. for TV <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, get your guys in the end zone, Chris. Get a couple guys deep, and uh, nobody gets behind you, that's for sure. And, well, I wouldn't mind them seeing bringing a linebacker or two just to keep pressure on that quarterback, but uh, Coach Pfeiffer's telling Tim Stubbe after we get a stop here, you know how to take a knee. <laughs> well, they're going to stop, Coach. They're lining up for a field goal. Oh, boy. They don't know if they want to do this all south again. So what are you going to talk here? Uh, I'm almost real tempted to just hang back and not rush too much and let them try it because I don't think they're going to kick it. 37 yards away, right? That's a long ways for a high school kid. Now, we don't know what that uh, young man has in his legs. Derek Minig is uh, their kicker, number 21. Oh, and he's a junior. I don't think, well, who knows? Only well, they got Kyle Myers was the holder the first time. He's a junior quarterback. They got two juniors out there.
Down on the sideline, coach, is uh, Steve Foster, number 53. He's got his shoulder bandaged up. He's out of uniform right now. He obviously was hurt earlier in the game. Well, yes, they are lining up for a field goal. Minig is the kicker. South hanging back. Kick is down. It's into the line of scrimmage. No good. South is going to win this ball game. Well, the missed snap Minnick's, again. Minnick's kick and the snap. Nothing went right on that for the second time. And if uh, Stuby can take a knee or two, South has got themselves a victory here tonight, 21-18. to 18. And a very tough opponent in Beaver Dam. What momentum to take you into Green Bay East next week. And the fans here are just on their feet. Deservedly so. These young men played their hearts out, I'll tell you. Will Hartman made two, two of the best hits in a clutch situation you could ever ask for. Eric Donovan is about 20 yards deep, protecting just in case. Stuby takes a snap, he goes down. Clock is running, we're at uh, 40 seconds left. Chris Wright has gone down, gonna try and get an interview after this ball game. There you see the uh, hero of the day, Will Hartman. We're down to 19 seconds. This will be the final play of the game. Stuby takes the snap and goes down. And that's going to be the ball game. Sheboygan South is going to win this one by a score of 21 to 18. Clock rolls down to zero, and there it is. And there you see the happy South High football team.